the power for the mill comes in through this power cable and I like the fact that it now is uh, removable that's a big convenience if you need to move the mill around to do maintenance or just relocate it in your shop you don't have to worry about the cord getting caught on or tangled in something the end of the cord is a standard for electronics so it's easy to find a replacement if you should ever need one the mini mill runs on standard 120 volt 60 hertz AC current uh, standard US household current at 8 amps so you could uh, run it on a 15 amp circuit but especially if you have other machines or things plugged in in your shop a 20 amp circuit is uh, desirable the motor draws approximately 500 watts or 0.67 horsepower the electronics control box occupies pretty much all of the back of the column whereas on earlier models of the machines it was uh, just about half that height and it's now in a, a nice box with this uh, lever activated handle here so you pull up on this and rotate it around counterclockwise 90 degrees and then pull out to open the door and then if for some reason you need to which in this case uh, photographic access you can lift the door off entirely and set it aside if you're curious as most of us are who get into these types of hobbies and you decide to investigate uh, the innards of your cabinet uh, be sure to unplug the power cable before you do that because you don't want to risk uh, anything getting in here that might cause a short circuit these boards are pretty robust as long as they're in their protected case but if any metal chips or anything else were to get in here and short something out you'd be looking at a pretty expensive and complicated repair job and obviously you want to be careful that your clothing or hands or anything else that might be in this area is not uh, contaminated with metal chips that might get in here this board at the top of the cabinet is the controller for the brushless DC motor you can see you've got a row of MOSFETs here a big heat sink and these are the electronic switches that uh, control the motor then you have some logic circuitry here that handles speed changes and changes of direction and so forth these are capacitors that absorb uh, electrical pulses and a big rectifier which converts AC to DC so I'm not uh, by any means an expert on brushless DC motors but, but if you're interested uh, look on Wikipedia or elsewhere on the internet and you can find lots of information this next board is a power supply that provides DC power uh, for two other modules this first plug here goes to the USB ports that are on the side of the head housing and that provides 5 volts DC uh, for any USB accessories and, but mainly for the tablet display for the digital readouts the second socket appears to provide 12 volts DC unregulated down to a uh, board below it this board is the uh, communications interface between the digital readouts and the USB tablet so we have 120 volts AC coming in through this terminal block and then feeding to the input of this transformer which drops the AC voltage down to approximately 8 volts and then it is uh, converted to DC by this bridge rectifier here uh, the ripple in the AC is filtered and smoothed out by this capacitor and have a 7805 regulator that uh, steadies the voltage at a 5 volts and has a large heat sink to dissipate heat that uh, occurs during that process then down here we have uh, two jacks this first one is a USB jack that goes up to the USB power ports that are located on the side of the head cabinet and this one here appears to be unregulated 12 volt DC that cable comes down here and uh, becomes the input power port to this board which is the interface for the digital readout modules down here at the bottom of the cabinet the cables from the three digital readout units come in and plug into these three ports on this uh, controller board for the digital readouts so this module communicates with the Android tablet uh, that is running the digital readout software but its primary function is to take the 
sensor readings from the uh, positional sensors on the three axes, X, Y, and Z, and to send that information to the software running on the Android tablet, which then displays it in inches or millimeters. This uh, metal plate back here is a big heat sink, I guess, that uh, helps to radiate heat away from all of the electronic components. But as far as I can see, there's no fan, and uh, I guess none is needed due to this large heat sink. That has a, a slight benefit, which is you don't have fan noise to deal with, and you don't have to worry about the fan drawing dust or other particles into the electronics area. And from the electronics box, we have a protective cable sheath that runs up here to the head, and that no doubt goes to the on-off switch and the other electronics on the front panel. Then up above, we have a, a smaller cable guide that uh, contains the wiring for the brushless DC motor, which is mounted up here. Inside of the electronics housing, we saw the USB power supply, and this is where the DRO plugs in. And there's also a second uh, USB port here for power to some other option. Of course, I mentioned the power on-off switch briefly in my introduction to this mill, but let's go over that again. Uh, it looks simple, but there's actually more to it than uh, you might expect if you aren't familiar with these. So obviously this is the off button and it's protected by a uh, flexible rubber membrane to keep cutting fluids, dirt and dust out of the electronics. And then this is the power on switch. When you depress the switch, you'll hear a slight click. And that is actually a, an interlock that engages. And the purpose of that interlock is that the switch can be cut off automatically under various circumstances. One of them might be a momentary power failure but another one is if you go to uh, lock the spindle. The spindle lock has an electronic interlock that automatically cuts off the power. If you're thinking about buying a mini mill, you may have noticed that there are some models available that instead of this uh, silver type motor here have a tall black motor. I like to call this the uh, classic style motor because it's the type that was used on the mini mill when it was uh, first introduced back in the late 1990s. But in practical terms, the older style black motors have only about half as much power as this much smaller uh, brushless motor. So that translates into much greater torque and consequently with the brushless DC motor there is a direct belt drive from the motor to the spindle. So it's very simple mechanically, and therefore it is uh, efficient in transferring power. You don't have a loss of power through a gear train that you would have on the other style of mill with the black motors, number one. Number two, it's also much more resilient because the drive belt acts as a shock absorber. So if you were to jam the tool into the work accidentally, it just causes the belt to flex, and then the electronics in this system will recognize the overload and trip the motor to the off condition. So when you're comparing prices, you'll notice that mills that have the brushless DC motor are generally quite a lot more expensive than the ones with the older style motor. And of course, the benefits that I mentioned for the brushless motor account for the higher cost.